My concern is that when you give every idiot an opinion and you give them a platform, yeah, and people read that and see it as gospel are going to agree with it because they don't see an alternative elsewhere. I grew up with Instagram. It's been like crazy to see the change that that's had. It has had like a negative impact to start with, but then now I use Instagram for work and to like um, use it as like a portfolio. I haven't posted on social media in three years. I feel like the, it affected me quite negatively. I became very egotistical. It has quite aggravating consequences on young people's minds. So it needs to be regulated. In the wake of a large study on the effects of social media on mental health, Social media companies are forced to cap daily usage. This is done in order to encourage a more healthy relationship with social media. Do you agree with the measure? We need to find a way to tame social media before it gets out of hand, particularly when we're talking about kids. It's so easy to spend an hour on Instagram and that's an hour you could have, I don't know, you could have just been reading. So I, I just definitely feel like having a cap is healthy. Social media is not just used by people just scrolling on Instagram, it's used for like so many other things, like people right. use it for work, people use it for um, part of their business. Well, I think you should have that freedom to use it as you want. In terms of like kids and stuff, parents should have a hold on that. There's so many resources out there to have a certain time that you can have on social media. Parents should, but they can't. I was supposed to put my phone like by the stairs at eight o'clock every night. I'll just wait for my mom to go to bed and get my phone back. Yeah. Do you get it? There's only so, so much. That's yeah. of being a child. A child. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, but if you stop that, stop me from being able to use Instagram in that way, like I'm more likely to stagger it throughout my day. Like it's probably useful to me and my productivity in that way. But don't you think as a grown up, you should be able to restrain yourself no. from going on social media? <laughs> I, I, like, yeah. I mean, so yeah, of so course, of so, so are so many things. Like I'm addicted to smoking cigarettes. It doesn't mm. mean that like when I go to Tesco, they're like, no, you already bought a pack today. Social media companies are massive. I think having regulations isn't necessarily a bad thing for social media companies, like when those regulations are beneficial for kids in particular. When we signed the contract, the terms and the conditions to use their platform, they extract our data. Like how much individual responsibility is there for the content that is viewed by people uh, and how much responsibility lies in the hands of advertisers and social media platforms. We literally have laws that are put in place in order to protect people mm -hmm. from harming themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what the cap is doing, is it's trying to prevent that harm from happening, i.e. subjecting yourself to social media so much and like causing well, mental But that's problems. the point. It's like, a very French thing, I have to say. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a restriction of freedom because one person makes a bad decision and the rest has to just like then abide by this by this thing, which is, to me makes no sense. Like just putting restrictions on time is uh, on how much time we spend is not it's, it's not productive. It's more than just time. It's the content. That well, they you know, do. social media sites have already started doing that. Like with Tumblr, like some of my friends used to go on there mm -hmm. and um, used to join pro anorexia groups and post the pictures themselves, like self harming, and that's when they were fifteen. Tumblr started doing restrictions on that when you type in self harm. Mm -hmm. Social media sites are learning, and all these companies are learning because this is all new. Yeah, but forever. the cap is us learning how to cope with it. It's like training wheels. You guys got really overwhelmed. A lot of things are going wrong. People are killing themselves. People are like building fake personalities we want to try and reduce that and see if this is going to help us kind of manage and create a safer space but there's a bad side there's a dark side and we need to find a way to kind of tackle that and the most part I feel like I've cultivated my understanding of self um, it's very easy for me to kind of navigate through social media and not let it impact me too much I don't see where the younger generation ha have the same mental capacity to be able to navigate through social media in a healthy and productive way um, ultimately, your 3D life is becoming something to do while one story uploads. And I find this like genuinely really tragic because really what you're trying to do is to show everyone you're living your best life. I think that you do it because you... It's a form you, of expression. Yeah. Not because, yeah, exactly. Not because you want to, to show people a certain, like that you're living your best life, but because you want to almost believe that you're living a good life as well. Like, like it's just, it's not always about how you look to other people, I think. It's how you look to yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, I think the generation before is actually way more aware of all this stuff because they've had all this access to information. I think they're, they're way smarter than, mm. about this stuff than yeah. we actually 
A boy's parent, concerned with his use of social media, accuses him of being addicted and claims that younger people are becoming increasingly antisocial. The boy argues that his way of socializing and communicating has just changed. Do you agree with the parent? When I was younger, I used to go out and play with my friends and like chill with them on the street. But like, I feel like now people stay at home kind of rather than going out and chilling with their friends in that way. But I don't you think it's amazing that you can be a kid and feel like you're completely like alone and then you can reach out and go on like um, a forum or a social media group and find people across the world who are interested in the same things that you are. It gives kids and it gave me, I think, some attention deficit of some yeah. sort yeah. where I'm not able to focus anymore. I think what's causing um, this uh, antisocial epidemic is uh, a society that has lost its values on what being social is. Mm -hmm. This is the least empathetic era ever. I, I can't think of a time where there's been less empathy between people. You think so? I'm, I'm, I completely disagree I, I, with that. I, I think that's very easy to like something and to feel in that moment, oh, I feel sympathetic for this person. I'm going to like the comment. Like or I'm going to, yeah. but th but this is this is these are um, mirages of real emotion. Would you would you say the same thing about like if, for instance, we had that conversation, but that was over <laughs> a phone call? With a phone call, you can use inflections, you can use tone to mm. to portray how it is that you feel. But we've actually gone back 3,000 years and we've gone back to hieroglyphics with um, emojis. Mm. I really do see social media as a form of socializing. Um, if we're talking about kids in particular, it's almost like the new TV. Like, oh my gosh, did you see what happened on Instagram? You all maybe go to school on the bus. Like, oh my gosh, did you see this? Or you tweeted or snapped this and we're now, it, it creates conversation. The way we socialize is gonna change. And the way we used to socialize is not gonna happen anymore. And we, we're just gonna have to adapt to this new way of socializing. And that's okay, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. To be fair, yeah, I think I agree with that as well in the sense that you're, you're never going to completely be isolated from a society if you use social media, unless you only use social media to communicate and that does not exist. Like, no one is ever going to be 100% like detached from society in that way. You always have to interact with people. I right? guess my views of social media are that ultimately it's a massively beneficial tool for young people in particular. As long as you give young people the education on how to use it properly, it's a lot easier for them to use it for those benefits rather than those harms. For example, we can look at the political sphere of Twitter. Mm -hmm. Is that not just a bunch of people like exhibiting mob mentality? Is it, is it people that are rushing to conclusions how, without considering how, facts. How is that any different because, from politics or from, from how we engage because with those the issues now? Because, because how social media has affected our political discourse is, is massive. We no longer think in well-developed, pre uh, prepared, like open ballot means of debate. It's, it's, it's very simply 140 characters. This is wrong, this is bad. Follow, follow, follow. If you don't follow, then you're ostracized. A prominent journalist criticizes opinion piece journalism, claiming that social media has undermined the integrity of reporting and fosters fake news. In response, a freelance blogger argues that this has dismantled elitist print media, opening debates to new voices. Do you agree that social media is bad for journalistic integrity? Social media is so accessible and it allows for so many people to become like, I think it's called citizen journalism, mm -hmm. where you can go and you can um, cover things yourself. Anyone can pick up a phone if they have access to a phone um, and be able to record things. And you can also use it to show as evidence for things that maybe like the police are doing. And it, it's just a great tool to be able to show the truth. The creation of like um, different outlets like Gaudem and Afropunk, like that allows voices to be heard of minorities that previously weren't represented in journalism. If we think about social media, it actually gives people so much access to political knowledge, right? Not everyone has a TV license to be able to watch the news and understand political debates in that sense, but they can watch what's been 
been on the news, on Facebook, mm-hmm. on Instagram, I disagree. on Twitter. I disagree. I, mean, I, think that's, that's I disagree. I really disagree because people well. don't know what's so good that, for them, and people don't know. No, and okay. people oh, don't know no, enough. No, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Okay, no, come on. Think, okay yeah. So, so, just giving giving access to political knowledge from social media is a way of communicating and socializing people. Back in the day, those that didn't exist. Like people didn't talk about politics in that way. Like people didn't have those discussions. Like how how you basically are represented on the political stage in that way. Like that. That's important, even if it is just 140 characters. For a lot of reasons, it's creating opportunities for people to not only voice, but find new ways to monetize their expression as well. Not everybody wants to be in a suit on BBC reading out a script. Some people, you know, express that in the form of a podcast or on radio or as a blog or on their Instagram. Even though I strongly disagree with the statement, I think we have to be careful about who we say is a journalist and who we just say is just expressing a monetized opinion. Even when you have like, so you have the whole fake news phenomenon and they're like, they spread really quickly, right? But like, even like in the way we consume news nowadays, um, and like if you follow The Guardian or whatever on social, like on Facebook, people are just reading titles and then like posting a comment right after. They don't even take time to read the article. So like, Even, yeah, like the way people are informed is just not, yeah, it's not good. You said something interesting about who we brand as journalists. I wanted, and the definition is a person who writes for newspapers, magazines, or news websites, or prepares news to be broadcasted. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're all journalists in that sense. Yeah, just like how we're all photographers or how we're all like. But I think it's very idealistic because it doesn't reflect reality. Again, like what we, does reflect I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I, I genuinely, I genuinely find it hard to believe that most people who use social media are like journalists and photographers who do all these expressive things. No, they don't. Most of the people who use social media are sheep that follow particular interests and niches and personalities and gain their opinions and insights from them. My concern is that when you give every idiot an opinion and you give them a platform, yeah, they're not necessarily like some sort of gospel um, uh, ordained uh, authority in any particular field. And people who won't know, who won't know about any, any better who read that and see it as gospel are going to agree with it because they don't see an alternative elsewhere. I don't necessarily think there is one way that we should be thinking. I do believe that more information is better than no information or less information. And again, it comes back to that access to information that social media allows for people. But then fake news fits into there somewhere as well. So if if we can't even spot fake news from the very get-go, how do we know that this fake news isn't being conflated with fact or opinion? Why why is it necessarily true of opinion pieces and not necessarily true of like, let's say the Guardian? I'm not saying that they don't come with a slant because of course they do. But when you're your own individual agent, on social media you can come at it with whatever bias or slant that you want it would be great if there was one place we could all go to and read news which would not be biased but there isn't and so you just have to learn how to navigate which which platforms you want to use or which websites you want to use like gal gal them and like if it's even if it's like a facebook group and whatever you want to do and that's fine because that's your again it's your responsibility to read what you want and take what you can from it this conversation just kind of heightened my perspective that it's new and we really don't know how to how to use it properly yet. I think it was really great because I think I kind of saw everyone's personality through through those different opinions. It wasn't black and white, it wasn't like social media is bad, social media is good. There's still like some overlap with the other side, like some kind of like half agreements and half disagreements. For me, it really highlighted how like we're five different people and we consume social media in five different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe this will become more clear when we reach the singularity, but yeah. 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 <laughs>